quote from the book on political framework management. With skillful lobbying, it is possible to maneuver a monopolistically operating supplier into a position that works to the advantage of the dependent company. It all started in 1911 with the decision of the US Supreme Court to break up Standard Oil. Before that, there was a widely held perception that monopolies, cartels and trusts essentially held the US government in a stranglehold. Previous legislation had been impractical, but with its landmark ruling that Standard Oil's high market share was proof of its monopoly power, clear precedence was established. And just like Standard Oil was broken up into 35 separate companies, US trustbusters would take the aim at many perceived or real monopolies. In this video, we will look at what companies can do if they feel unfairly treated by the suppliers and how government bodies can help. Let's get started. In the 1950s, the interpretation of the law was super strict and the merger leading to a market share of the resulting company of 5% or more could lead to the merger being banned. In the 1970s, the structuralist approach of the Chicago school started a push in the opposite direction. As procurement aficionados, you will find it interesting to learn that game theory played a role in this. The analysis of game series showed that actions like preemptive capacity expansions were not necessarily under-competitive as previously assumed. Anyway, what followed was an era of many mergers and acquisitions during which trustbusters lost most of their monopolization cases. A notable exception was the breakup of Bell Telephone in 1982. As a result, we again see many mega corporations controlling large portions, not only of the US economy, but of the global economy. Once again, the pendulum is swinging back. And in a rare case of bipartisan consensus in the US and global consensus evolving, the United States, the European Union, Japan and Korea are pushing against dominant companies, especially in the tech sector. Granted, most of this momentum is focused on end customers and not on the supplier procurement interface that we are focusing on. But it provides a more sympathetic environment to potential grievances a customer may have with a supplier abusing its supply power in purchasing chessboard balance. Now what you do will very much depend on the type of company you represent and what type of supplier you have grievances about. Many big companies may have direct access to lawmakers, while smaller companies will have to take the longer route through the legal system. But again, the good news is that the momentum is with customers and not with monopolistic suppliers. So there you have it. B5, Political Framework Management. A purchasing chessboard method that not a lot of people like to talk about, but clearly has teeth. Okay, I'm curious. Have you personally been involved in taking action against a monopolistic supplier? And if so, how was the experience? Let all of us know in the comments down below and should have a question, I will get back to you within 24 hours. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next one. Bye.